Sowing is a grace that God gives to you to stay in his face. And sowing is really powerful because when you're operating in sowing, you're showing God that he truly is your source. He truly is the avenue in which you have invested your life and you're receiving what he has for you as far as his plans. When someone is a sower, they are taking God's will by force, not leaving no room for the devil. When you're a sower, you take away Satan's place to rob you, steal from you. And see, sowing challenges the thief. When you're a sower, you oppose the thief and you tell the thief, I'm taking authority over your corrupt ministry. I'm not going to let you steal moments, miracles, money. I'm not going to let you steal my ministry from me. If we look at uh, the thief in all of his functionality, steal, kill, and destroy, if we look at killing, I mean, we don't always look at killing in the financial bracket. Killing, when we hear somebody got killed, we, we, we see that their soul left their body. Think about that. We, we think about their body being traumatized, beaten, some type of brutalization went on and they left. So I want you to catch this. The thief's ability to kill is in various departments of your life. So when you are sowing, you challenge the thief. You challenge in an area uh, of killing that could happen in various ways. You're challenging an area of destruction that could happen in multiple ways. You are opposing and confronting an area of stealing that could happen in more than one way. So that stealing, killing, and destroying could move in different areas, not just financially, but it can move in health, it can move in relationships, it can move in living arrangements, it can live in housing, it can live in transport, it can live in transportation. And see, when you're sowing, you're taking authority over all those brackets. Seed sowing is for the person that has God number one in their life. When the Lord not number one, you can't be a true sower because there's other things that's going to pull you away. Seed sowing is for the person that has allowed the father to be number one, not number two, not number three, number one. The first thing that a sower does when they get money is so. Saints, I've seen trained for years. And what I've studied in people is if they're not a sower, they just not a sower. <laughs> it's just not. You can't make somebody so that's not a sower. If they're not a sower, they're just not a sower. Sowers are individuals that they are already meditating about sowing before money even hit them. They already got their seed in their mind. They already operated in 2 Corinthians 9. They purpose in their heart to give. See, Satan the thief has formed a doctrine in people. And the doctrine that Satan has formed in people is to convince them that the reason why they don't sow as the first thing is because they ain't got enough. That's what Satan has told people. When really in all actuality, there are people that you may consider they don't got enough but they'll still sow the first thing because they're a sower. Sowing ain't got nothing to do with the amount of money you have. It has everything to do with the amount of trust you have. Money is a divine system where you can express divine trust. Money has... Money amount has nothing to do with sowing. Sowing is a principle 
of reaction, not a principle of amount. So, so when we get to sowing, it don't got nothing to do with the amount you got. The woman had her last meal and, 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 and Elijah telling her, we dealing with the principle, not the amount. I know that you magnify an amount by magnifying principle. This principle, it disrespect amount, it disrespect scenario, it disrespect situation, it disrespect seasons, it disrespect all of the conditions that you, in terms that you can vocalize. Sowing has nothing to do with the amount of money you have. Sowing has everything to do with the amount of trust you have. Faith, that's why we call it seed faith. Seed faith is where you communicate with God financially about how great you think he is. <laughs> See, I get excited about this because I'm a sower. I just sow today. I sow every day. Seed sowing is where you talk to God with money. When you honoring God, you telling him, I want you to hear me loud and clear. I love you more than anything. When you are sowing, it is the highest level of communicating trust. Wow, 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 wow. That's why that communication start hitting other areas in your life. And you find yourself surrendering all to the Lord because you are already in the communication. When you're sowing, you're talking to God about giving you the future that he has already planned for you to enjoy. That's why when I was sowing, I wasn't worried about what I was suffering in the now. The enemy will have you studying on what you're suffering in the now. Oh, you know, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. I wasn't worried about that. For the joy that was set before me, I endured the cross. See, sowing is a cross. Honoring God is a cross. Whenever you deny yourself, it's you carrying a cross. So when someone is sowing, they carrying a cross. You carrying a cross where you deny yourself in finances and you're showing God, I pit you first. I pit you first. Saints, the father does not ignore the sower. Harvest is, is God showing you I was watching you all along. Sacrifice. I saw every time where you could have took that for yourself and you gave it to me. Not only does God see the seed, but God also sees when the sower is working a job and they get paid and they come out their pocket and so God said, let me write this down. Y'all see this? God talked to angels about sowers with a boastful gesture. You don't, you don't, but saints, I done seen this in the spirit realm so many times. That's why I preach sowing. When, when a sower is sowing on earth, God called Michael. God called Gabe, Gabriel. God called uh, 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 Uriel. He called them all. Hey, hey, y'all. Hey, you, you see her? You see him? Look at them. They believe me. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? Michael, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yes, Jehovah. Angels stand attention at God's verbal sarcasm about the sowing that's going on out of his vessel on earth. God speak with sarcasm. God speak with boastfulness. I'm going to shock you. God speaks with pride about the sower and their activities and decisions. When you honor God, you have the ability to analyze his response towards you that's carrying security. You, you heard what I just said? When you honor God, you have the ability to analyze his response towards you that's carrying security. If you don't get the revelation of God's security, you can't so correct. People don't understand that God's security is hidden on the water, not in the boat. So, so when, when you stay in the boat, you never obtain that stream of knowledge. You'll never comprehend that stream of knowledge. Whenever you start moving in true honor towards God, your eyes can open up to his security response to your giving. You have to understand God's security is him saying, you're not going to be left ashamed. God's security stops financial shame. God's security stops financial blame. That means that you ain't going to have to blame nobody. Oh, they didn't help me. That's why I'm poor. God's security stops financial blame. Oh, it's because they ain't released my check. I'm, I'm poor forever. Or it's because they ain't giving me child support, I'm poor forever. You lying, baby. God's security, it annihilates financial blame. You ain't going to be able to blame nobody because you're going to be rich. Who you going to blame? Oh, they didn't help me. God, like, I already helped you. So what's the problem? And I'm helping you now. Sowing unlocks a system of help that no flesh and blood can stop. Sowing unlocks a system of help that no flesh and blood can stop. So who flesh and blood you going to blame? When you're a sower, you ain't talking about no haters. Because you understand as a sower, haters birth tables. And wherever there's tables, there's fresh provision. When a person is a sower, you ain't going to find them talking about, oh, my haters, my haters, my haters, my haters. Because a hater is a door into fresh finances. Because God want to show off in front of that hater how much he love you. A sower is beneficial. A hater is beneficial to a sower because remember, the, the, the hate that's brewing in their heart, God say, let me give you some more money. Let me give you some more finances so I can make them hate you more. That's God, man. You don't understand God. The father is a show off. Didn't you see Jesus compare the father to evil men? Jesus said evil men know how to give good gifts to their children. How much the father know how to give good gifts? Why did Jesus do it? Jesus was saying, the father know how to stunt better than the world. The father know how to showcase class, showcase riches, 
showcase abundance better than the world. What Jesus was trying to irk you, it was his attempt to show you why are you acting so timid, nervous, afraid when the father is the real one that's carrying money strength, provisional strength, transportation strength, housing strength, health strength. See, Jesus wanted to arouse you in your expectation that the father is the real one that know how to make everything work out for your favor. God's security towards the sower is manifold. It's not just financial. Not only is he going to take care of you financially, but he take care of you in your path. That means car accidents will pass over you. Tragedy will pass over you. Wickedness will pass over you. If everybody getting robbed, you won't. If everybody's suffering, you won't. If everybody experiencing the same harm, injustice, God will fight your battle and bring you justice. Your verdict won't be the same as everyone else. When people in harm's way, God will hide you under the feathers of his wings. He'll protect you. Psalm 91 will show up strong, heavy for you. So security is not just financial. Financial security already set because whatever you give to God is what he protects. That's the area where you're going to be strong. Wherever you obey in God is where you're going to receive a harvest of being strong. I knew this when I was sowing money. I started sowing money intentionally. I sold money intentionally. I had made up in my mind, I'm going to be a top sower in any environment. Nobody going to outsow me because I wasn't dealing with amounts. I was dealing with meditation. My consciousness was exercised in sowing. I had a sowing consciousness. I had a grace on my awareness that God put in something in my hands for me to worship him with it. God pinned something in my hands for me to sow. God put in something in my hands for me to honor him with it. I had a consciousness. So ain't nobody was going to outsow me because ain't nobody was going to outthink me. You see what I'm saying? My thought life was in the seed. When God know that your thought life is in the seed, his thought life is in the harvest. My God. God. His thought life is saying, I love this, so I'm going to keep on providing more opportunities to you. I'm going to pitch you in a bracket where you can keep on having money so that I can keep on feeling what you, what you, how you make me feel. Michael Jackson said, how you make me feel, you're really turning me on. <laughs> You mean you make me feel. We don't know who was getting turned on because statistics show that he was scared of tun tun. That's just... There's a word I'm supposed to speak. There's several of y'all that's you gotta understand. Don't take your tun tun rag and wash your face. All right. You got to understand, you, there's a word I'm supposed to speak to, to several y'all on here. The same rag that you wipe your tun tun with, don't, don't wipe your face with it. All right? It's, you got to get another rag, all right? The tun tun rag and, and then your rag, invest in it. You got it. You got it on you. You got it on you. You got it on you. Some of y'all wipe your feet, then you won't wipe your face. Nah, we're not doing all of that. 
Ah, we not doing all of that. That Tun Tun rag got to stay in its proper bracket. Don't be wiping up here with no Tun Tun rag. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going I'm to finish. I'm going to finish what I got to say. Don't, don't, write, don't wipe. Don't be wiping. Uh, don't with no Tun Tun rag. Sips. Aim at brushing your teeth. After meals, especially if you eat in sweets. Because Saint's cavities and uh, tooth pain ain't no joke. And your gums is delicate. I don't want none of you all to go through no pain. I tell my daughter Zendaya that sometimes tells Zendaya, I say, Zendaya, you don't see me eating no sweets, right? I say, Zendaya, don't eat no sweets. Don't, 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 don't have, Zendaya, she say, Daddy, I want banana. Good. Banana, grapes, watermelon, sometimes, you know, not all the time watermelon, but banana all the time, mostly. Like, she tried to substitute. I, I don't want to see her go through no pain. That pain ain't no joke. And when you see your child going through pain, oh, that's the worst. Saints, we got to stop trying to pit the power of God to work on stuff that we could prevent with our decisions. You see what I'm saying? When the power of God is working through us to make the decision, and then consequence come. Now we're trying to release the power of God on the consequence for the decision. You see what I'm saying? And somebody might be, well, prophet, you powerful. You can just heal that. No, 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 I can heal that through wisdom. Why release the power of God on something that I, I can heal it through wisdom? You see what I'm saying? Prevention is always better than demonstration. If I could prevent it, why permit it? You caught what I just said? If I could prevent it, why permit it? That's like somebody drinking poison. I'm going to drink this poison. I'm going to drink this poison. And then your stomach start hurting. Oh, I feel like I'm about to die. In the name of Jesus, I shall live and not die to declare the glory of love. That's what we do in health. <laughs> Dang my teeth white. That's what we do in health. We digest We kill ourselves, and then when we die, we say, in the name of Jesus, I shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Some of y'all too old to not begin sleep. You, you, you heard what I said? Some of y'all too old to not begin no sleep. Some of y'all be up there talking, I'm going to be like prophet. I'm going to stay up all day. Take your old ass to sleep. <laughs> you need to hear it like that. Take your old ass to sleep. Get you some sleep. You ain't me and I ain't you. I'm, I'm, I'm on something else. <laughs> I'm on something else. Go to sleep. Get your rest. Some of y'all got your alarm clock on. Talking some, I, I'm going to pick my alarm clock so I can check every now and again. Take your alarm clock off, baby. Take it off. Get your sleep. Because you know what's going to happen? <laughs> when your body gets to a certain place, 
And, and, and you, 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 I'm telling you, sometimes you're not deep enough in the glory to be handling the other end. Like, I mean, here's what I mean. If you're going if you gonna substitute the natural, you got to be deep in the supernatural to do that. Are you hearing me? If you are trying to substitute the natural and you're not overflowing in the supernatural, you're going to lose. You see what I'm saying? If you're going to substitute natural stuff, you got to be fully in the spirit. That's why I really want to uh, pit to you. You can't be trying to substitute natural stuff and you still got cares, worry, stress. You get fearful sometime. You subject to lust every now and again. You feel lonely. You feel depressed. You got emotional problems. You trying to study scripture. You can't focus. See, all that stuff, you don't pray for over an hour. Please take your old ass to sleep. <laughs> Get in those wild zones till you get five hours of prayer, four hours of prayer. We in there, man. I talk to you about it. Yeah. We do damage spiritually. You get to a point in the spirit realm where you do damage to the enemy. You see what I'm saying? What I'm saying is there's so many people that they try to substitute the natural and say, I'm supernatural. And then you, you're not really all that supernatural, like even in your work sake. Like it's not like you meditate. How much scriptures you memorize? You got like a hundred? All right. So, so take your old ass to sleep. You still try to memorize two, three passages. Take your old ass to sleep. It's this... You, you, you're trying to substitute the natural like you're so spiritual, but you ain't all that spiritual. So go sleep. Thank you. Take your alarm off. <laughs> take, your, <laughs> take your alarm off. Zerobo sarandi kisto reve ke rabasa. Nando reste teso. Because while you got the alarm on, I mean, you keep waking up. I mean, you, 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 what well, I'm saying to you, you're not deep enough in the spirit to sustain yourself on the other end. So the, so your natural going to crumble. You ain't got no spiritual backing for what your regiment is. You see what I'm saying? Your regiment going to have to be extremely spirit. Here's what I want you to see. If you remember, uh, let's look at the life of um, uh, Moses. He goes 40 days with no food and water, but he's deep in the spirit. Let's fast forward. Let a mother suck us do that today. Let them go. You see what I'm saying? Let them go 40 days, 40 nights without no food and water. You see how they be dead real quick. You know, dead. And saints, I'm going to tell you, in this social media world, you're not going to die in peace. Somebody going to have you on Instagram filming you. Ain't this that nigga that said that he was on 40 day fast? Yeah, that's him. This nigga is dead. Look at, look at. Dead. Nigga dead over there. This that same nigga that said that. This nigga said he about to do a 40 day fast. It looked like he about to do a 40, a 40 minute nap or something. That's what it looked like over here. This nigga dead. Y'all talking about he was about to do a fast. This nigga dead over here. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. He got his priest necklace and everything. He got a priest necklace and some stilettos. 
It looked like he was fasting and drag queening at the same time. He was fasting and drag queen in this, this, oh, no wonder he was fasting. He had a RuPaul spirit. That's why he had a RuPaul. Look like, <laughs> he was fasting, looked like he about to walk down the runway at the same time. And then he had Victoria's Secret's catalog bags. Yeah, Victoria's Secret's catalog bags. No way, he, he went to hell. He went to hell. Come on, come on. Let's upload this on Instagram. This... There's security in honoring God. When you honor God, there's a supernatural security you activate. Not only in finances, but in your path and even in your conversations. God would alert you and let you know, don't speak with this person. Security. Security purposes. Don't hang with this person. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't allow yourself to mix with their doctrine of thought. Get up, get away from them. Because we're dealing with the security that comes from God. Many people don't sow because they don't understand his ability of security. God divinely backs the sower. He brings the sower into a place where they can live substantially, safely, securely. There is an abundance format in sowing. Your abundance is already predestined. That's why God ministers seed to you because he wants you to discover it. Your abundance already predestined. That's why God minister seed to you because he wants you to discover it. Your abundance ain't got nothing to do with this natural world. Abundance, prosperity, wealth, riches, it comes from the supernatural power of God's glory. It is the power of his glory and the glory of his power that releases abundance to you on earth. Yes, God works through people. Yes, God works through opportunities. But I'm telling you that the source is heaven. The source is God. He is the glory and the lifter of your head. The soul must understand that God wants to secure you. That's why he created the seed system for you to release your faith, release your trust, and see that he can handle you. Man don't sow because they don't recognize that God can handle them. You're not too hot to handle. God can handle you. Oh, if I, if I throw it on God, what he going to do? Let's go to Psalm 26. <laughs> when I get drunk, I teach better. Psalm 126. <laughs> Psalm 126, verse 5. It says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. What does that really, what does that really mean? God saying that there is a tear realm of honor. Now saints, people they, sh they cry tears when they're affected emotionally. So let me get, take you deep on this text and give you a fresh revelation on it. When it says, those that sow in tears, that means that this money affects you emotionally. This money that you sow in. 
You could feel it. Emotionally, you could be doing something to satisfy your own self. Wow. So you sowing in tears because even your emotions recognize that you have picked God before your flesh. Manda rebe son do borre disa. Even your 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 soul has recognized. Oh my gosh, the flesh not in control no more. Back then. It was all about us. Now it's all about King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that saw in tears is saying that even your emotions recognize your redemption. Mata, oh Rabbi. Even your emotions recognize that you blessed. Even your emotions, your soul saying, this is a brand new girl here. Girl, I can't even recognize you. This is you? you? Used to buy cigarettes. You used to buy drinks at the club. You used to buy lottery tickets. You used to buy your favorite everything. It was all about you and yours. Now you done made it about King Jesus? It was all about you. Saints, a part of those tears in your sowing, is your old soul not being able to recognize your new soul? I, I'm, I'm teaching deep on this, right? Your old soul saying, you're not the same. There's a new sheriff in town. There's a new Lord. There's a new God. There's a new system at work in you. You used to think different. You used to think about yourself, what you was going to do, how you was going to make it happen, how you was going to fix your life. Now you trusting in God's word. Now you looking at the word to be your manifestation, the word to be your portion, the word to be your lifestyle. You believe God. Girl, this ain't the same you. Man, what done got into you? You're not the same brother. You used to be up there talking some, I'm going to be get rich off of this and this and this. Now you recognize that God have a riches anointing that he want to sit on you. He want to place this riches mantle on you and show you a supernatural glory that brings you into abundance. Those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. When we deal with reaping in joy, we dealing with God saying, what's going to come to you as a result of you sowing this going to make you happy. Saints, we need to listen to the word of God more and stop listening to our flesh and the body and listening to Satan lie to us. What does God's word say about sowing? Look at what the word say. It say you're going to reap in joy. You know what that means? That means that what is going to result What's going to come as a result? What's going to happen as a result of this is going to be pleasurable. What you're going to see as the manifestation from one sword to the next. Let me talk to you. Sowing brings fantasy to pass. Let me tell you the mystery of a fantasy. A fantasy is a is is a is a is a imagination uh, that's that's inside of you, and, and 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 the fantasy comes from actually the word. The word has to be the driving force, because you you have to uh, you you have to build your imagination off of what the word has already spoken and preached, and then. Your imagination will take you deeper and show you, okay, okay, this is this, this. 
The only problem is that the sower can't stop. Let's go to Galatians 6. It says that um, uh, God is not mocked whatsoever man so that he shall also reap. No, no, no. It says, uh, no, no, no. Is that Galatians 6? It says, don't be weary. Yeah, Galatians 6, 9. It says, don't be weary of well-doing for you shall reap if you faint not. Now watch this here. Fainting really means that you stop doing the activity of sowing. A lot of times we look at, oh, fainting is, I, I just had a bad day. You know, fainting mean I, you know, I was being up on myself today, you know. I, listen, fainting mean that you stop sowing. You know, we, we say, we, we can give a lot of definition, but fainting mean that you stop sowing. Saints, do you know that there's people that they sow and so, and then they stop. That's what we call fainting. What the word says that if you don't stop sowing, you're going to reap. So the secret to reaping in joy is to keep on sowing in tears. God is highly eager to see you translated into the reaping and joy dimension. So he tests you with sowing and tears because he's highly eager, are you catching me? To see you translated into the reaping and joy dimension. Father, I want to speak a prayer over my partners right now. I decree and I declare over you, money just keep on being loosed into your bosom. I speak money over your life. The money is loosed. The money is loosed. The money is loosed. I speak over you. Your money life is grand. Multiplication, increase, prosperity. I speak over you. Multi-millionaire status. Seeds multiplying. And you walking in, increase more and more. I speak this over you. I speak this over you.